We're going to talk about brushless motors so last and week, we're going to get an analyzer out, weren't yeah, we? So last week we tried to do this, but you were not cooperating from home. <laughs> I wasn't cooperating so from home. we're trying to engage with Brett from the chat because uh, we're trying to do this experiment mm -hmm. without you. That's right. Or you're in person. So what have we got here? So a couple of high performance racing motor brushless. Absolutely. And I thought um, videos we could show what how they're made, perhaps. How they're made, what and, they're made um, of. How they work. Maybe how they work. How they work, yep. perhaps, and uh, talk about... I'm not exactly an electrical engineer, but you've got the basics of it. Yeah, yep. you see all the components. Obviously, the past mm -mm, 10 or probably nearly 20 years now that they've, they've gone from brushed motors to brushless. Yep. That's mm -hmm. probably the two biggest fundamental difference of the electric motors that we use in, in RC now. Yeah. Um, and people often bend your hand, oh, brushed or brushless. They just think it, that brushless is, is faster and... And it's been tuned to a point where it does put out a lot more power than the brushed motors. The main difference between the two is um, that a, a brushed motor operates on DC current. So you can just hook that up to a battery, negative and positive, and that'll power and run from a DC current. Yeah. An AC motor, oh sorry, a brushless motor uses AC current, so alternating current. So you can't just hook a battery up to any one of these three, three points and, and make it work. So you need to, to switch it over in a, in a sine wave configuration. I think that's the right terminology. Mm -hmm. And then that will power the motor up. Yep. Um, there's much less um, mechanical friction in a brushless motor because you don't have the, the physical brushes on the commutator of yep. the motor. Um, for there, there's no, it's a contactless the motor. Yep. So it's actually the magnets moving around the outside of the motor. Yeah. Um, yeah, like electrically. So that's how it switches the, the different phases. So it's a three-phase motor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, the other terminology that people use is poles. Um, now you can have two pole motors, four pole motors, etc. Depends on the application. Yeah. Um, our censored competition motors that we use for tent scale uh, are generally two pole. So negative. Uh, sorry, north and south pole. Just. Um, the, the rotor, the, the internal bit, mm -hmm. the spinning part, yep. has got two different magnets on it. Whereas some of the eight scales, um, aeroplanes and stuff like that will have four poles, six poles, multiples of two. So the idea of the, the more poles is the smoother it's, it's meant Smooth. to be. Yeah. And you tend to find those more in uh, senseless. Yeah, yeah, yeah more yep. in senseless applications. Because yep. these are more, more sort of high tech or they use a, a sensor board to control the, the switching of the the AC current. Yep. Um, that's why they're referred to as sensor sensor motors. Yep. So you've got three three heavy gauge connections, and then you've got the the six pin connector on the back to to monitor the sensors. Um, and that sort of talks. It's almost like a an elect, well, it's like an EFI signal on your your car engine or whatever, and that's what tells which phase that the rotor's in in conjunction to which phase that it has to power up next. Yeah. And you can do certain things like add, referred to as turbo and boost and things like that. And effectively these these brushless sensored motors are a lot more versatile because they're a lot more tunable. You can effectively give the car like, like three speeds. So mm. like a zero degree static <clears throat> timing motor, you just call like one speed, then you can add boost. So that could be a set timing um, that's applied to, to how it switched from 30% to 65% RPM or throttle opening and then you've got turbo which will come on maybe the last 30% so it might come on from 60% to 100% throttle opening or RPM activated or and you tune all those three things to get mm -hmm. a good feel and smooth and also depends on what you're racing. Track conditions and everything. Track conditions yeah. generally 90% of people run what we call in blinky configuration yeah. which is zero timing. Um, which makes it easier and takes a lot of the tuning work out of it. Mm. So with that, you've got a little bit of end bell timing, which you can do mechanical timing. Um, but yeah, apart from that, that's a very big nutshell, I suppose, of, yeah. mm. of uh, brushless motors. So I suppose what we could do next, do you want to run one up or do Should you want to... run it and then we pull it apart? We'll run it and pull it apart. Yeah. In case you can't put it back together. <laughs> <laughs> So what we are have we two. Use we actually have two in case. What are we going to use to run it? I've actually got a. Do you have a motor analyzer I've here? I've got a new one. I have got a motor analyzer here. Yes, this is new from. One. This is from Master Joe. Oh, 
Oh. This is the old war horse. These are the ones, we've actually got them in the cabinet here for display, but I didn't want to get one out and scratch it and everything. Yes. I should have got a new one, a new one out with me to, um, to check this one out. But that's exactly the same as what we're using now. So we're using okay. a fully charged battery? We're using a fully charged battery, that's just an old... Puffed. Puffed, <laughs> that's right, it's no good for, no so good for much, no good for much else. So, so let's put a uh, camera from top, so let's move quickly up here. Yep. yep. In the middle, move quickly. I'm okay, gonna plug this. this in. Yep, all right, so it's on a couple of connections to make. The first one that I'm gonna make is the sensor. So, the sensor basically uh, allows the speed controller to know at which point to energize the pole, yeah. right? A certain pole, so yeah. it, it always knows um, uh, when, when to rotate at the uh, optimum point and these clips are quite tricky most of the time we, we usually solder them but for this application you can see why the clips don't usually get used much because we can't have that shorting out if we can help it well that'll probably be okay <clears throat> have you seen any sparks you just see me running that's okay yep. we've got a fire extinguisher haven't we somewhere oh yeah uh yeah. there's a good chance i'll be running Maybe. out of the shop though Quite awkward, to be honest. Oh, that'll work, won't it? Is that touching? Yeah. I think that maybe this is something that we should have rehearsed. Rehearsed? No, never. What do you no? Mean? We're no. rehearsing it right we, now. We don't have a plan. All anymore. right. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. So we are on. So maybe. we're on. This looks like the game operate operation. So we're right? looking overhead. So I'll get a bit closer so we may see some numbers here. So we're going to look at some numbers, there and you go. so we can see now that the the C sensor is the one that's energized. So that's where the rotor sensor is over. So if right. I spin that around, we we'll see now we've got C and B are now energized, and that should go around to B, and then you'll notice B and A. Right. And then okay. that'll keep going around. C. Okay, so that, that's telling you. That's telling us that the sensor is hooked working. up correctly and yep. it is working. So yep. that'd be the first step on the motor. Okay. Um, then we can do a motor timing check. So what that can do, that can check your sensor board in relation to mainly the, there's three sensors on the motor, so you can check how closely trimmed they are. As a rule, you want them within one or two percent. Usually the better, the better tuned the sensor board is, or the more uh, in sync it is with the rotor, mm -hmm. the better the motor will perform. Um, the other thing it's going to do is it'll average those three numbers out and you can reference that against the mechanical timing mark on the back of the motor. Um, now that's usually not, not accurate or whatever, but it's a good indication so you know what it's at. Mm -hmm. So if we push this on here, I'm gonna push start. You can hear it running up and doing its thing. Now this is all doing it itself. You can see the counter going up, the motor running. You probably can't hear me. Oh, I probably can. Yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> this is an old off-road motor, 13.5 turn. I think many people have used this motor. Yeah. I think it's had a good home, so it's finished. Yeah. It looks well Average loved. of 55 degrees. So it's definitely one of Nick's motors. Yeah. <laughs> it's been it's been cranked up pretty high. Hey, it's yep. probably been run pretty hot. That's near the end of the timing marks, I think. You're probably maximum timing is yep. probably I think it's 50 out of 55. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. And the next things that we can see. Um, <clears throat> is it showing our sensor board? So we got 53 on the A phase, 55 on the B phase, and the C phase was 57. 57. Yeah. So yeah. we've got a variance there of four degrees, which, so it's not great. So it's probably been heat warped and, and whatnot. It's probably better than that new, but that's an indication. So we've got an average of 55 degrees. You can mark that on the can. So that's, that's your static... Um, test the other thing that we can do is a noise level test believe it or not so we can check a noise level usually run it when you come back from the track mm -hmm. before you do maintenance you might run it or if you bother to write it down so you can see how noisy your bearings are now motors you really want between a nice motor should be between 85 and 88 decibels it's going to be noisy then i imagine that this one's probably a little bit a little bit hold uh, probably a little bit louder being being um old I'm, I'll be surprised if that would be so the case. Say well loved. Uh, I think that bearing is brand new almost. Yeah. Ooh. So you can hear even now at low RPM, we've got 93 decibels. 
Okay, it's come about 98, 95, run it up. So it's not it's not fantastic, but it's still more than utilizing. So it's showing that we've got 98 peak decibels there. So you could use that as a reference before you take it apart. Maybe you're going to clean it, or maybe you go, oh, it needs new bearings. Now. I guess the bearing is probably the, the biggest uh, indication there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you can you can get tools. Orca have a tool that you can press them in and out and stuff, yeah. and people do mm -hmm. change them, and there's certain grade bearings that you can put in. But as a, well, mo most people, as a rule, when you're, the bearing's worn, and that's really the only consumable part in the motor, the motor's done enough work, it's time to, to put on. it aside for a spare. Yeah. So you might put a new motor in, or just keep that one for a practice motor, just do it like that. You can go to the trouble of putting new bearings and stuff in, but the rest of the motor's usually that, um, that, that old and worn. Well, I guess that's something that you'll consider when you've got a brand new motor. You'll yeah. run it and see if you want to change the bearings in it. Absolutely. Now here's probably the most inc the most critical te uh, check that we can do. So this is the the KV uh, RPM check. So mm -hmm. this is what they use for sanctioned events and yep. race meetings like that. So where you don't have to have a handout motor, but everybody's motors got to get scru scrutinised. So they all have to be set um, to a specific KV, and that's to make sure that everybody's on a level playing field um, and nobody's got their timing too far high or any cheating yep. going on. So they might set it to 2600 kV or whatever, and they can do that by um, running the motor up and adjusting the timing on the back. So again, this will be another one. <clears throat> KV is um, revs per volt, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's 1000 RPM for every volt that's applied to the motor. Yeah. Um, and that is the biggest... I've got wires touching. That's what's happened here. I don't have to run yet? No. Nah. Anyway, I've probably disturbed one of the plugs. It's probably this, this touching here, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. So that'll give you a, a KV rating, and you can effectively make two motors identical to each other, like from a tuning point of view. So it levels the playing field um, to ensure that. So when yep. you have, and you can see this motor here has even been obviously been to a big race meeting in Monday it's got a um, it's got a green a green paint mark there and that would have been put on by race control at some point when it's been when the timing's been checked the KV has been checked then they, they do up the screws and they mark it with the paint to ensure that the timing is not getting altered and the motor is not getting touched in any way and they can check that at any time during your race meeting mm -hmm. so that is the motor analyzer which is a really handy bit of kit it's not the be-all and end-all in performance and tuning, but it can be an indication, um, and you can you can monitor your own condition of your own motors as they're getting older or when they need replacing, yep. things like that. It's a um, good maintenance tool. Overall. It's a great maintenance tool overall. Hmm. So the next thing we were going to do is pull yep. one of these motors apart, weren't we? Yeah, I think so. Crack it open. So here we've got. That's not in the way there. No, go for it. Gonna need. It's a special tool set for motor maintenance. That's right. This is just for motor maintenance. No, not at all. Master so, Brett. So what I'm going to do here is loosen the loosen the sensor board. Usually you would take note of where it is, but we already know that this one is at 85 maximum. degrees. Yeah, maximum. Just you to need the top. Just move it up to there. Up to right here. Perfect. That's it. it. Well done. Look at that. So this is the sensor board of of oh, the so motor. So those three screws. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I feel that we probably should have. So there we have our timing cover off. And you can see here, for in focus, that we've got now the sensor board oh, is moving. fully floating. So now that that timing rings off, yep. the sensor board is effectively loose and just flopping around. Yep. So I'm going to get my two mil here. And that, uh, that motor analyzer has been from the stable of Master Joe, and if that hasn't run thousands of motors over its life, they're a really good thing. They're mm. something that you'll probably only buy once, only in, buy once in your life, yeah. and you just you look after it, and keep using yeah, it. you just keep using it. Mm. This motor's been uh, tuned up before. It's got aluminium screws, screws in it. Somebody's put aluminium screws in this motor at some stage. That wouldn't have been a factory 
factory option. So what's going to happen now is now that the, the I've taken the through screws out of the motor, yep. is now I can take it off the sensor board and the bearing retainer. Yep. So here we have a dust cap and a little shim. Yep. And this is one of the... That's like a Teflon shim, isn't it? Yeah, that's a Teflon shim. That's a we can see bearing. here that we've that's yep. a ceramic bearing, and you can see there that that's that's going to be part of the culprit as to why, as the wear and tear. That's really the only mechanical thing in the motor is the two. That's the only two touching points is the t the two bearings, front and rear. Yep. Now here is the sensor board, mm -hmm. and there's a brass shim in there, which would have been on the end of the rotor. Now if we have a look here. We can say this is like fine, 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 but there's three pickups here. Yep. And that's what we're referring to. That's what's reading the motors. That's what's reading the phases on there. Um, the next part is to get the rotor out. There's another shim. You can take the front housing off. It's going to come out this way probably had a loose pinion at some stage. Yeah, because it's, it's marked the shaft. Yeah, it's marked the shaft. That can stay on there. That can stay on there. This is actually a fully tuned motto from Phantom, actually, from memory. That's a factory tuned one, is it? Yeah, I think so. That's why it's got the, yeah, and I'd say that you've even maybe cut the shaft. Did you Perhaps. have that in a, a BD series car, maybe? Yep. And had it too far over, yeah, and it was probably rubbing on your battery. Yeah. So you've probably cut the shaft with the Dremel. Chainsaw and. Up <laughs> <we go. laughs> so that is the that is the rotor of the motor, and you can see there that there's absolutely nothing that that physically touches the the motor winding or or whatever what what's in there. Hmm. And this is the collector ring, where the three phases are soldered together. And you can see it's a nice quality motor, really good soldering, really heavy wire. Um, yeah, really so nice solder. It's interesting to look at all the windings here because on a brush motor, those windings are actually on the rotor. Yeah. It's the other way around, isn't it? Yeah, and The yeah. magnet that's on the rotor is actually on the, on the case. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so it's like they're, they're inside out effectively yeah. to one another. Um, yeah, and that's the, the biggest difference between brushed and brushless motors. So they would act, indeed have three, three magnets on a, on a brushed motor. Whereas these ones will, and they'll have the two north and south yep. and in the can. Yep. Where these ones that have the north and south here, the two poles. Yes. And the three wire, the three windings out here. Yep. So even on the rotor, it's important to say that there's different size rotors, different diameters. Yeah. So that will produce different different kind of performances. Different but power bands and characteristics. Manufacturer like Phantom, they select the rotors and they actually have a rating. So they, me they measure the magnetic field of each mm. one, and then when you buy them, you have actually um, a selection on. You know, Absolutely. different um, magnetic fields, so the yeah. highest, the better the quality of the motor is. Yeah, generally, unless you're racing 12th scale or something, you really need to dull the power curve yeah. down. You want high RPM mm. and low yeah. torque, so then you'll use like a titanium or low magnet, uh, low magnetic rotor. Yeah. Whereas most people in stock and that will run the most amount of, of magnet they can get in yeah. there. Um, yeah, and you can see here, well you probably can't see, but there's laser, laser etching on there with the part number, um, so what it was initially. Um, so you could probably look that up and get all the specs off there. Yeah. Um, and there's another a, another machine called a, a rotor checker, which yeah. m measures the, the magnetism of the rotor That's as fine. well. So you can see, because when they run through heat cycles um, and they get old, they do lose a bit of magnetism over their life. And the more they get, the more they get overheated, the, the more performance that they generally tend to lose over life. But that is, uh, yeah, the, the breakdown of a, a competition uh, tent scale brushless motor, sensor oh, brushless wow. motor. Hmm. So we've run it up, we've tuned it, now we've got to put it back together and run it again. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Not on this episode, maybe.